Hey everyone, um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of a part two to my story, which is the first video that I posted. So if you haven't watched that one yet, please go check it out. Um, Again, I'm Eddie. I'm a conflict mediator, trainer, and consultant based in Montreal, um, and I'm the founder of EJH Conflict Management. Um, so in my first video, I talked a little bit about how I got to thinking about um, needing to change my mindset and approach to conflict, and I talked a bit about it, personal experiences that I had that made me realize that I needed to change. Uh, but in this video, I just wanted to give you some insight into my professional development and my professional training. Um, I often get asked a lot how I got here, how I found myself in this role, um, why I started the company. So I just wanted to do a short video on that. Um, so, I mean, I guess I'll kind of just start at the very beginning. So I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts um, specializing with a specialization in photography and printmaking. So kind of totally nothing to do with my current work, uh, though I would argue that I gained a lot of transferable skills from going to art school, uh, particularly when it comes to receiving feedback since artists um, have to withstand a lot of critique but I won't go into that in detail but so that was kind of my first foray into post-secondary education and it was during my time there that I realized that I wanted to work with communities um, doing kind of more frontline social justice work so you know I was in my 20s at the time uh, I was very immersed in like activist culture um, and gained a lot of my knowledge um, ab about social justice from community work that I was already doing. So groups that I was a part of, organizing that I was a part of, and really just like watching people do the, the work, like do frontline work, do frontline organizing, right? All of the older people in community um, whether just older than me or the actual elders in our community, uh, really learning so much from their wisdom and knowledge sharing. So that kind of got me thinking about, you know, being a more politicized person and wanting to take my art practice like into a more politicized space. So um, after I finished my BFA, I went and did a specialized diploma um, at George Brown College in Toronto um, called the Assaulted Women and Children Advocacy and Counseling um, Diploma. So it's, um, you know, like a specialized social work diploma where it focuses specifically on people experiencing um, intimate partner violence, or some people call it domestic violence. Um, that was a two-year program. And it was a really like life-changing program for me. So it was a program that was just like run fully by queer people, uh, queer women of color, um, First Nations women. Like it was just like it really pushed me so much in terms of understanding what harm is, why harm happens, the systematic reasons why harm happens. Right. So things like poverty um racism misogyny uh homophobia transphobia uh classism ageism um like all of these things that kind of create the landscape for harm to happen and to continue to happen so this program was amazing um and it was in that program that, you know, we did a lot of training and facilitation and group process um, in, um, you know, really just uh, counseling, intervention work, advocacy work. So that was really where I kind of got my first foray into working um, with conflict because obviously I would say that intimate partner violence and 
normal conflict resolution are very, very different in terms of how you would handle them, but just in terms of also the dynamics within the program itself. Like there was a lot of conflict within the program in terms of people having different political ideas, people wanting to use their uh, knowledge in different ways, um, young learners, older learners, like so it was really kind of in that program that it pushed me to think more about intergenerational work and like dealing with people um, who have like different opinions than my own. So there was a lot of like conflict resolution um, being modeled and also being practiced like in the program itself. So anyway, I did that program. I, re I received the Staff Leadership Award for group process uh, in that program um, and after I graduated I was um, hired by the college or I worked at the college for a little bit um, doing some coordination work for one of the um, like student wellness centers um, and it was kind of during my time working there that I um, started thinking a lot more about how conflict is dealt with in community because I was doing you know, frontline work at the time, working at a community arts organization, um, being somebody who organized large scale events for the community. So I was always thinking about social dynamics, power dynamics, conflict resolution. I was learning more and more about transformative justice, um, which was also kind of in taught to me by the community, uh, though also something that I focused on and studied in my time at the college, um, and realizing that I really wanted to do this work and that I was actually quite good at this work. I was good at holding nuance. I was good at having difficult conversations. I wasn't someone who was like super conflict averse. Um, and so I decided that I was going to start a company and I was going to do, um, you know, try my hand at doing conflict resolution training. Uh, and this is when I moved to Montreal because there were some grants available by the government to kind of help younger people trying to start their own businesses. So I moved to Montreal and kind of began kind of like the research and development phase of my work. Um, at the time, I also took some mediation classes with Compass Professional Development. Um, and that's kind of how it happened. Um, but I will just add one last piece, which is really that like there's also so many incredible um, thinkers, writers, organizers, um, counselors, therapists, practitioners like that have influenced my work as well. So there's the, you know, formal education that I've done, but like so much of my knowledge comes from just people sharing their wisdom, sharing their work. I had some incredible mentors when I was doing placements during my uh, college diploma. I had amazing professors when I was doing my undergraduate degree. I had, like I mentioned, so many amazing community organizers and peers that taught me so much. Um, and, you know, just a few uh, kind of names that I'll put out there as people who were really influential to me and kind of remain influential to me really Miriam Kaba when it comes to anything about transformative justice work and like doing conflict resolution, but also like accountability work for serious harm in our community. Um, Harriet Lerner, um, she's an amazing uh, relationship and couples therapist who I find like just exponentially like really can make the work um, easy to digest and really accessible. Um, Robin Kimmerer, she's just like, she's so amazing. I'm someone who tries to see a lot of lessons from nature, uh, learn a lot from the natural world, and I feel like she just does that. She brings like such incredible wisdom. Uh, Adrienne Marie Brown, her emergent strategy work was super important to me. Uh, Shira Hassan, Ruth Wilson Gilmore, again, for like their work around uh, prison abolition uh, and just like starting to understand the value of relationship and of like human life itself uh, and those are just a few names um Brene Brown was really influential to me when I first started again just being able to take theory and turn it into really digestible and accessible work I think is a skill um 
Anyway, these are just a few of the people that have really influenced me uh, and a little bit of a background as to how I got here and how I started to offer this work.